What is up everybody? Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to show you guys how to install this wasteboard and T-Track system on the 150 CNC. I also added this cool little grid for ease of lining everything up. So let's just jump right into it. And this is what I've been working with. I got this 150 CNC in the midst of the whole pandemic and I had to make do with what I had. And what I had was exactly not enough MDF. So let's tear this thing off and start over. This is all held down with screws, so it's quite easy to take this all off, so if you have to replace these MDF pieces, it's a breeze. And I really like the T-Track system, it really opens you up to a lot of accessories. And this is what the 150 would look like when you get yours, and that's kind of the reason why I'm making this video. It definitely does look like an odd machine, well, I mean, compared to the other machines on the market. To me, it seems people are struggling with the idea of it not having a waste board. But the openness of the machine actually makes it easier to replace the waste board, and once it's set up, you'll never even know the difference. And I actually really like the different design of the machine. It actually sets it apart from the other machines, and just kind of gives it a different, unique look. Things you will need to make this happen. Number six, three quarter inch screws. MDF. And I went with six T-Tracks. I'll add links down below for everything I used. So let's fire this thing up so we can move it around. So I want my waste board to be roughly the size of the exact cut area of the machine, just making it easier to line things up knowing that I'm not going to go over. And so I'm just moving the spindle to each corner, making a mark with Sharpie just so I don't lose track of where that is. And once I get a mark in each corner, I'm going to go around with the straight edge, well, in my case, a piece of scrap, and connect all them dots. This line won't be visible because the track and the waste board will cover these lines up. Just gives me something to reference off of. And again, this is a beta machine, and it is slightly smaller than the production model, so I'm not going to give you guys any exact measurements, as per they will be slightly different than the machine you'll get. So let's start out by installing the T-Track. For me, I feel that would be the easiest solution. So now I'm gonna butt this T-Track up against the front. We'll lock this in later, but this will give me something to reference off of. And then I'm gonna lock in both outside T-Track pieces, getting them as close to the outside cut area as I can, knowing this will lock me in, allowing me to keep everything within that cut area. The reason I'm using two drills is I'm using a self-centering bit just to pre-drill all the holes and make sure the hole is in the center of the countersunk hole on the T-Track. I'll add a link down below and these are made by Bosch I believe and I've had these for a few years now and they're still going strong. A little bit of a recap and this is where we add we had the front piece butted up against the front for reference this is not locked in yet and both outside pieces are locked in and now i'm going to find the center of the t-tracks we just locked in giving me the center point to put my third t-track and i just made a dash and i transferred it to the back side of the machine as well so i knew my pieces pieces would be relatively square and again, I'm not going for anything crazy accurate here. For my needs, this will be plenty fine. Now on to finding the center of the middle piece and one of your outside pieces to install the fourth track. And do the same thing on this side for the fifth track. And right about here is when I realized I messed up. Butting these up to the front of my reference point isn't going to allow me to put T-Track accessories on from the front. So I had to take them all off and recess them back about an inch or so. Luckily it wasn't a big deal. It just set me back about five minutes. I'm just learning as we go. And good thing I caught it now. So we're back on track, and as you can see, I made a mark between the center and the outside piece, locking in piece number five and four. Very important to put a screw in every single hole. I actually did every other on the last one, and the T-Track accessories would actually pull it up off the surface. So make sure you screw it all down completely so you don't have any issues. 
And now onto the final piece. This is bumping up against the front of the machine, giving me a reference point. And now I'm gonna screw this thing in, but we're gonna actually remove it and I'm gonna cut slots in it so I can actually put T-Track accessories into it. And this is what I was referring to earlier. As you can see, if I bump these up to the front track, I would not be able to get these in and out. And over here you can see where I won't be able to get the track accessories in either. So I'm gonna cut this in a few spots just to make it easier to get things in and out of them. And here we go. I cut it into two pieces, removing about an inch chunk in the middle. And because we already screwed this in, I already have screws to reference off of knowing that it'll be perfectly lined up where it was before. And all I'm doing here is getting the measurement for each of my MDF pieces. They were slightly different just because I didn't go super precise with it, but it'll work for me. Now on to cutting this MDF sheet. I picked this sheet up from Home Depot. I think it was $23 and this thing should last forever if you're only using it for the wasteboard pieces. So I cut this into strips. I used four strips. And then I'm just cutting these to the length of the T-Track. Again, nothing super precise. And we're gonna attach these with screws. We're gonna use this countersink bit here and I put it at its deepest setting. This thing is great. I got it from Amana and it's lasted me forever. But it has this little bearing on here so you don't mar the surface. And I'm just gonna tighten this up and I'll be roughly shooting for the depth or at least even with the T-Track so you can surface this a few times before you need to replace all the pieces. So I just kind of plowed these all in here but if you plan on doing the grid I would measure a little bit because it's quite obvious how uneven they are with the straight grid lines. These are just inch and a quarter black drywall screws. I use two screw holes in the front, one in the middle and two in the back. And if you guys are liking our content, please hit that subscribe button. We'll really appreciate it. And you could go ahead and be done here. Just give this a quick surfacing and it'd be ready to go. We're gonna add a grid pattern, which I'll show you shortly. And as you can see here, the screws are relatively deep. They're at the height of the T-Track or a little deeper. and onto the X-Carve. So we've been using this for quite a while now, I think three years, and Jeff's really liked the grid pattern. So we're gonna transfer this on over to the Onefinity just because it makes lining everything up a little easier. I'll also attach a few more videos down below for different wasteboard videos. Ben Myers did a good one along with Crafted Workshop. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just mark this zero. I just put a tiny little Sharpie mark here and I'm just, that's gonna be my zero. It, again, Nothing super specific, as long as my lines are straight and even with the machine. This took, I believe, 20 minutes. I just made a quick grid pattern in Easel. They already have the grid on the design software, and I just followed those lines with other lines, and it spit out a code. And this is it. It makes it look so much better just having the grid pattern on there. So this is it. I'm gonna walk you guys through how I attach things to the CNC most of the time and a few ways to square your pieces on the machine. But for the wasteboard, that's pretty much it. So good old CA glue. This is my go-to lately. Ben Meyer showed me this trick and it, I've been hooked ever since. You put two pieces of tape, blue tape, masking tape, whatever you got, two pieces on each side of the CNC, make sure they line up, add a squirt of glue on each piece, and this thing is cemented to the wasteboard. So a majority of the stuff I do doesn't even really need to be squared to the machine because I'm typically cutting things out. But if you have a straight edge, a long square, a level, anything like that, you can butt it up against the front of the machine and get your measurements off that if you don't have this super fancy grid pattern. You can also measure off the T-Tracks or the front of the wasteboard. The X-Carp had threaded inserts, so I don't have a very large collection of T-Track accessories. I do have these hold downs and they're, they're okay. These ones are a little big, but I would like to get some stop blocks or something like that. 
I've been using this controller to set my zeros and move the machine around and it is amazing. It makes everything so much easier. And that is it guys. I'm gonna stop talking now and let you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks for checking out our channel. Please hit that subscribe and like button and check us out on Instagram. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. I know I said I was done talking, but let me know what you guys think of this flag. I carved it on Memorial Day. I made a great post on the old Instagrams. And again, I'm still new to the CNT content, so if you guys have any suggestions, please let us know down in the comments.